Yo yo guys, it's your boy Shield Kumar aka Siri Cat, and in this video we are going to take a look at the 20 free calls that I have done last week, uh, so first week of the season. Uh, I would like to also apologize for starting to record late, uh, so I just for gore I guess, it's called Emojicon. Um, but yeah, we'll be taking a look at this uh, free hold 20. I'm sure most people have noticed that this does appear to be one of the easier keys or at least this is this appear this seems to be like the community perception so this key is done on tyrannical storming raging and of course as always um i do want to say that this is week one because that is important because week one is difficult because most of us here don't have much gear we don't have uh, the new sets. We have the old sets, though. Uh, most of us, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I want to say everyone, but I haven't checked, so I'm just gonna say most of us probably do have. Set. And here, Evoker went out. I think the change talents or something. I remember being something weird like that. Uh, but yeah, pretty much uh, this key is definitely not easy if you don't know what you're doing same as most other keys i would say as right grenade uh i think the part that for some people makes this key easier is that there is already like m plus strats right from the back in the back in the day from from bfa Bio days since this is a bfa dungeon uh i Shattering think bellow. i hope i'm not wrong but i believe this is a bfa Bio dungeon so for example this bellowing whatever the shattering hell it's called bellow. uh shattering bellow that's a that's a very hard hitter very dangerous ability so be ready to uh react if you need to on that uh i would also even suggest pre using your rupture and just making sure that uh people are shielded properly um uh, you know on fortified that that thing will hurt even more and it will be really annoying but i do want to say like i think you'll see very soon why i also don't recommend potentially using uh, a rupture for that and the reason is because on start of this boss fight this guy actually hits really really hard um uh, I do not know if they're gonna nerf that or if it's a bug or something, but he appears to shoot a person twice. Uh in 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 uh like back to back almost every single time. Um I'm not sure if that's a mechanic or uh, like I'm just I'm just not sure because as you can see here he changed. And then he shot me again. So it could be ra random. I do think it's random, but you can get unlucky, and if he hits the same person twice, if that person does not have like good defensive cooldowns, they might be screwed. But that's the first first thing I wanted to talk about. So a lot of healing needed right at the start of the fight. Do be aware of that. It's very important because this disc, if you fall behind there on healing, somebody will die. Just make sure you're shielding everyone and that everybody has good health going into that. Um, second thing is obviously this bird bait I mean ideally you know somebody else baits uh, of course it can also be you I mean if you have like all melees and you're the only caster you should go out and bait the bird um, if not then I guess just the DPS can bait it or you still can i mean it's That's better right for you to move shot. than some range of dps right because better that you lose like Dead a caster bomb. dude and than somebody else because honestly this boss fight isn't that heal intensive as long as people Bio people are spread so like the main right thing we want to talk about is like this azeret powder shot so that thing will hit in like a cone but it's not really a big cone it's like a, a shot basically like a frontal arrow right kind of style shot. and if it clips anyone it will of course deal like the initial Bio damage bomb. which is pretty big but nothing too crazy and then it also leaves a dot which again is not too crazy it just like deals quite a bit of damage so just making sure you are hitting uh hitting your you know your good heals at the correct time and also your di dispels is important obviously as always like tracking the dots and stuff is a key 
Uh, and that's the boss. I mean, honestly, a really, really easy boss. Like, the main danger comes from Azrael's shot overlaps with the... Uh, with the, the, the bird throwing poop at you, right? These are, this is the most dangerous part of that boss fight. And here we imprisoned one ad, but, I mean... There was no way we were getting through that without, like... You can mind so these these guys by the way. So like if if your tank wants to skip this or if your group, I mean it's not just tank, if your group wants to skip these, they're absolutely skippable. You just throw one minesuit on these uh on that on that group that he imprisoned, you just throw a minesuit there and it's free free skip. Pretty much. Well it's not free, I guess it's five second cooldown skip. <laughs> Which is pretty much free, right? Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd say like the only downside of skipping there is that if you by any chance die before you kill the second boss, the person that releases won't be able to make it back without you, so you, they'll have to like resuit. So that's kind of like pity. So I'd suggest if you're doing like some lower keys or some massive pug run, for whatever reason, you know, people are dying or whatever. I, 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 I'd, I'd probably clear, like, skips and runs like that are usually dangerous, but uh, if you're playing, like, at a higher level and in an organized group, I would say that skip is quite nice because those ads, like, while they're not necessarily very dangerous, they do have potential to, like, wipe the, the group because of, like, where you fight them. It's not even, like, them, it's, it's just about where you fight them and their mechanics force you to move a lot and there's just not too much space there so they're just kind of annoying yeah especially in weeks like this where raging is also a thing so like you can't even cc them and stuff so it's, it just makes things a little bit difficult and these traps i mean you gotta be careful here i think at some point i'll probably walk into one i tend to walk into these all the time they hurt quite a bit, like they're they're not very fun. They're not gonna kill you, but you will have to like single target hard heal the person that's trapped and that's not very fun as priest. I don't really like those types of situations, so obviously avoiding traps is a pretty big deal. <clears throat> and here I wanna say like next boss is really not heal intensive, so you can really just rip all this all your CDs on the packs here. Uh, next boss is simply just about doing mechanics and rotating like the barrel people. If you have a paladin, that boss is pretty much free. And power. Um, I'll explain the boss once we get there. For now, I'll, I'll just talk about his trash. So, honestly, these guys don't really do too much. They have this like going bananas, which is just like this like spin. It's just a risk in the whirlwind, pretty much. That's called going bananas instead of called whirlwind. I think everybody by now knows that mechanic, so there's not much really to discuss. Uh, you will have ricocheting throws, which are dangerous, but as long as people are somewhat spread, usually you will be fine. We have traps, and uh, actually interesting, interesting interaction here um, that I didn't mention is... Uh, like pre previous trash there's that one guy that will like cover everybody with a, with a, that water or whatever it is and if you jump you get stunned right uh so what you what you gotta be careful uh during that is that obviously no jumping but also like storming will knock you in the air and if that happens while you have the debuff you will still get stunned so that's just something that's uh, in my opinion very it's an interesting interaction uh, you just gotta be wary of that <clears throat> uh this trash here is a bit dangerous so do keep in mind that these guys you know they hurt because once again there's not much room to maneuver and there's ricochet ricocheting throw because like that 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 ability is dangerous when people cannot spread properly and like here you just don't have room to spread so i, I would actually do this pull somewhere else if possible or even avoid it completely especially on 45 weeks and here we just feared a guy into another group, so we screwed up there a little bit. I'm not really sure who did it, but it happened. No big deal though, you, you just keep pulling. You know, on tyrannical week, this is all pretty much fine on fortified week. So for example, if this happened in this current week, at that moment I'm uploading this video, it's bolstering and fortified. So if this happened during this week, uh, we would be we would be probably dead here. 
Probably, I say probably because, you know, usually you can deal with things, but bolstering just makes everything, like, really difficult. You really have to, like, not chain pull too much uh, and know your limits, and it's all... Honestly, honestly bolstering is, like... It's, it's such a fun affix because it changes the way you play the game, it changes your priority targets, it makes some potentially easy pulls difficult and some difficult pulls like not very difficult and stuff like that it's, it's just like overall like in, in my opinion at least a pretty fun affix if you play like in an organized game where you know people are thinking about what they're doing and not just like mindlessly aoeing and stuff the worst thing people do on bolstering is when people just aoe like hardcore aoe and then and then you end up like in a situation where like the main prior target that is the scariest one because usually those ones have like the most HP ends up being the last one alive with like a gazillion uh, stacks yeah here I mean I guess I just got aggroed by the there was waiting I wasn't sure if I was in the circle or not because I don't really trust blizzard hitboxes fully so I just didn't want to like cross over I was just making absolutely sure that I'm not in the AoE of his throw. And then, um, took the Raz, kept healing, of course. <laughs> Obviously. And, uh, yeah, just this pack is, again, all the same mechanics. They just kind of keep repeating. You have these, like, ricocheting throws, you have, uh, you have, like, the, uh, what do you call it? The frost thing, wait, I think someone will, I think this group has it, when it gets cast I'll tell you. That one has to be interrupted, I always forget its name. Frost blast. Yeah, frost blast, so frost blast hits really hard. On fortified it's almost like a, an AoE one shot, on tyrannical obviously it's dangerous with potential overlaps. Just to make sure you're do you're like interrupting that. It's it's really there's really no excuse not to interrupt it. So it's a it's a very good idea to interrupt. Basically, like what we were doing here is we're just buying time for lost pretty much. Um, Ground shatter. And you know, activating this RP saves you. Like if you activate it and then clear, you save like almost like a full minute. Easy. Because you're not wasting time just waiting for the RP, so I strongly suggest like doing something like this. You know, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but it will save you like a good minute and a half. And then see like we're killing this guy while waiting for the next dude. It's just overall like a pretty big value of like you know just clearing things while you're doing something else. Always a good idea, and then plus you know saves time and stuff like that. And then see this. This guy ask, asks now if we're going back for the bloodlust, and uh, if I remember correctly, we are. I think we're doing the turtle dude after the after the boss. Yeah, nice, yeah, good, kind of a good good decision. And here I actually screwed up. I wanted to farm my harsh uh, discipline, but what I ended up doing is I just put myself in combat and I couldn't mount. So this was really really stupid of me. Don't do that, I guess. <laughs> Um, and yeah, once again, I wanna say that this boss really isn't very heal intensive. Like, yeah, there's some healing to do, of course. You will randomly, like, choose people to shoot, and this is the scariest part. So, like, when he does this powder shot, um, empowered, you kinda have to dodge them. Now, dodging is um, for us, it's actually kinda tricky. It's a very simple mechanic, but the fact that he jumps away and makes a lot of space between you and from where he's shooting makes it kind of difficult a lot. And then there's these barrels. Okay, so the way the barrels work is... Uh, this guy will do like two buffs. He throws brews, right? That's kind of like the, the mechanic of the fight. He will constantly be throwing brews. He has like a bad brew. Caustic freehold brew. He has... It's, th it's this one. And that one will deal like damage even to enemy... Invigorating freehold Even to enemy uh, targets, by the way. So that's pretty interesting. So you can technically pull trash into that and get some free damage on it. Invigorating freehold brew. Um, Grave shot. 
there's this one that gives haste in which you should stand for sure and there's the other one that gives crit in which you should also stand for sure so just overall i mean here i was pretty terrified of the shooting so i was just like playing extra safe not really picking any buffs and stuff i was just kind of like invigorating freehold crew playing the game i guess uh, just playing it safe but uh, if you want to optimize and you should optimize because really on this boss there's no reason not to you just want to pick up all the buffs and then nuke this um invigorating freehold through eudora i don't know how you pronounce her her his name eudora something like that regardless pretty cool boss honestly pretty simple not very stressful you just have to be wary of your positioning and i would suggest like saving your uh, feathers for that moment and also i forgot to mention that the barrel that he throws um i mean two best ways to deal with it is to just have a paladin in the group uh, and just if you hand a freedom and assign a person every time to pick up the barrel with hand of freedom nothing happens or you can immune it. If you don't do either of these things, then the then the barrel will jump on the closest person from its landing location. And it will disorient them until you break the barrel. So pretty much like it's kind of like a target swap thing. And if you'd want to save yourself from target swapping and losing damage, you pretty much have to uh, you just have to like see. This is what happens. And if you want to save yourself from losing this damage, you just assign somebody to pick it up that can deal with it so if you have any sort of like root removal or disorient immunity or i'm actually not sure exactly all of the abilities that do it but you should do like a research for your own class i'm sure like there's information out there of what you can do to make the barrel easier i just know paladin makes this really easy because you just pre-assign somebody to to have like hand of freedom and you just walk into the barrel you pick it up and it's gone immediately so it's like free pretty much it's not free it costs well in one global city <laughs> there you go <laughs> which is way better than costing somebody else 10 right so um once again it can also be immune pre-immune if you pre-immune it you're fine all right so this guy i mean not really much to say here honestly this guy is just like a mini boss he I'm actually not sure if this guy scales with tyrannical or fortified. Oh, actually, that's an interesting thing to check. I would Shell say down. he probably scales with... Because all of this is technically a, a boss, right? Ring of bo down. booty. Ring of booty. That's what I call my ex. Not really, uh, but um, I don't have an ex. I've never talked to a woman before in my life. Uh, but pretty much the point the point I'm trying to make is I think this guy scales with tyrannical, so just be careful here. If he doesn't, my bad, I guess. I'll I'll apologize once one more time if I'm wrong. <laughs> it, it, it would just would make sense because all of this should be like a boss fight, but we've seen I've seen weirder things than this. So... Uh, regardless, he's easy. He just dodge turtle shells and he's free. The next boss is actually, I find him quite tough. Although, every time I've said he's a tough boss, everybody laughs at me and say, like, Bro, just dodge, just dodge the sharks, man, lol. Just walk away, lol. And it's like... And there, we didn't interrupt Frost Blast, and now you see how much it hurts. And that, that's on Tyrannical, so imagine Fortified Week. Imagine, God forbid, Bolstering Week as well. So that, that will one shot you if that guy is like bolstered and fortified. So just be careful also going into hierarchies. It's just kind of like one of those like must interrupt kind of kind of abilities. That that's like high priority. Somebody keep somebody gets assigned to interrupt that and like gets to keep their interrupt only for that. And here I released like an idiot. I didn't I forgot that we had an evoker, so I just yeah, that was my bad. Um Pretty interesting thing about this is, um, alright. So I'll explain. Like, the, I've heard a couple of ways to do this boss. I'm still kind of like in the learning curve still, but this boss is pretty simple. So, like, what he does is, um, he'll do this, which leaves a dot on you. So that's like the first thing. 
then he'll be tossing these sharks at, at a random location now as far as i know and once again somebody correct me if i'm wrong shark tornado but as far as i know these sharks what they do is they will kind of do shark just like toss. jumping yeah. and like just walk well walk i mean more like a wobble to their nearest target so what you can actually do yeah. with this information is Where you can bait and you can just kind of keep kiting so if somebody is mobile that doesn't lose too much damage from moving they're a perfect target for this unfortunately we do Shot lose quite a bit by moving a little bit less with the new foresight because we have those instant radiances so if somebody needs yeah. heals we Shot can definitely touch. deal with it yeah, you can see and then basically like what you need to do is if you are the one that's targeted by the shark you kind of want to like guide it to the pool see like i'm doing right now but he rearms, so every time he rearms, he basically picks up a shark that's currently active. He has, as far as I know, he has two sharks. Um, to heal, shark that, that he'll be like throwing all the time, and when he also rearms, he has the thing where he just like, will jump yeah, to the shark, shark and uh, that's very scary. Don't be like in between him and the shark. So, so, th so this shark. this fight this fight is actually kind of yeah. tough. As I said, like I mean, I know people people make fun. It's it's pretty simple. But it is very stressful and you do need to be on top of your game and as, as you can see like even right now on this key level shark The shark almost one shots so You really 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 have to be aware of where the shark is What the shark is doing Don't greed And as you can see like in these moments where there's two of them it's very scary because obviously if there's two on you they can one shot you or if it's one on you one on your friend that just means like you kind of have to manage who's gonna be doing pools when and how and stuff like that and as you can see like we dropped we players here tough. so this boss in my opinion again i'll say is no joke you you actually do kind of have to be focused for this boss because he's not while well, not difficult he is very punishing almost everything is like a one shot with him and here uh, i'll be honest that was kind of my bad i just kind of let warrior die i don't know what i was doing i should have balanced him i guess i guess i was just like, so focused on shark that i didn't really notice that he had a blade and that he was sticking down um so that's 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 just on me bad 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 moment that's just a bad play uh lack of awareness in all honesty but it's okay you know you live you learn you move on I just kind of like forgot that that thing even has a dot, that's all. I wasn't even checking and yeah. You know, week one, learning curve. As I said, this was one of the first, I think, Painful 20s. Eh, actually, that's not really true, Painful but this, this isn't my strongest dungeon. Like, I, I have not played in BFA. I'm uh, uh, relatively, let's say, new to retail, so... I do not have experience of this dungeon at all. This is like a completely new dungeon to me, so... Painful motivation. Flame I think like a lot of people have seen Painful flame and stuff. Motivation. I think those are mostly people that have already done these Painful dungeons motivation. in BFA, so now they're frustrated that people don't know them. I remember this from Mechagon as well. Like everybody was like, Bro, how do you not know how to it's like okay, well I don't know man, like it's a new dungeon to me. Like I'm Painful here, motivation. you know, like week two, first time, bro. Painful like I can just know it, you know, nobody knows things, you have to learn them. So, of course, this doesn't excuse, like, complete, complete cluelessness, especially if you apply to higher keys, like, you know. I can tolerate clueless people up to, like, weeklies, whatever weekly is for you, like, whether it's 16s, 20s, 18s, 10s, it doesn't matter, but as long as it's, like, a weekly key, I don't mind people not knowing, but if you're applying for pushing, especially above like maximum level, which is 20, because of course you don't get like in-game reward for pushing beyond beyond 20, right? So it's just like personal kind of decision. So it's like, why are you applying if you're not willing to put in the time to learn dungeons? It makes no sense. I'm not trying to be condescending, by the way. Like I know. Painful motivation. It, it might sound like that, but Painful if you motivation. think about it, really, it's just kind of weird. Because it's like, why would you apply for this if you're not willing to like put in the work and like actually try and... It just makes no sense, basically, to me at least. I mean, if you want to try yourself, that's fine. And a lot of people, I think, just lack the ability to find information properly. Uh, but that's why hopefully these videos help, you know, I mean, 
I, I've been there before. I've been that person that wants to push keys. But I just didn't know how. I didn't have friends that were doing it. I didn't know where to find information. Because honestly, like Icy Veins, Wowhead, and all these, like, they're a good, like, starting point. But once you get into, like, the nitty gritty of everything, they're not always correct. They're, like, very basic cookie cutter guides that, you know, they're trying to make, like, sort of like a. Um. Like a general guide to help people, which is great. It, it's a great thing and they're very useful guides. Uh, but, you know, you're not gonna find like specifics and stuff very often. They're lacking because it would simply be too much. And then they would have to write like gigantic essays about like just one dungeon, which is just wouldn't be fun for people to read. So I'm assuming it's probably a good, a good business deal in general for them to not go too much hardcore. And yeah, by the way, you can fear this as long as you're not the targeted person. Like, if somebody else is targeted, you, you can go and fear just to kind of like buy your team a little bit more time to CC. But ideally, um, ideally, somebody with like longer range CC will just keep CCing the barrel. And then obviously, you're gonna be dodging the, 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 the Swift Wing Sabres. And there's two more abilities, guys, that I will talk about now. So, like, in phase one, he will throw a knife at random person and apply a bleed that's pretty bad bleed, so you have to heal it, kind of. Usually, atonements will be able to cover it, though. I will say that, at least at the moment, on the current key levels that we're doing. And the second thing is, he will do this... Uh, when, when he goes into phase two, all his abilities get overcharged, so... That same dagger that I mentioned earlier will get thrown on everybody, so everybody gets takes damage and has a dot. So obviously, people that can remove a dot are very welcome on this key. Um, not necessary though. And then the second is like obviously this cannon barrage will go on everyone, and, and this ability is actually very dangerous. It might look simple, but it can put you in a bad situations, especially with certain overlaps. Like let's say you have storming. And then the guy with the with the bomb comes, or you get hit by these, and suddenly you know you're in a bad spot. But here you can see like you can see how dangerous it is. Like I had to uh, I had to drink a potion there because I was dropping too low. Uh, potion is very powerful at the moment, guys. So yeah, for that be prepared with like rapture. You have some penances saved up for that, and yeah. Just make sure everybody stopped up going into it and make sure that you're ready to top everybody up. And by the way, for this new force set is amazing, guys. It's so good because it gives you like instant radiances that you can just cast while you're moving and it's really, really good. It feels good. Oh man, I can't wait to show you guys the new force set gameplay. It's super fun. I can't wait to talk about it more. I think one more video of all the, all the like previous week and then the new week will new week videos will start with uh, Fortified and the Forces. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you know, make sure you like uh, the video, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments of course. Um and hope to see you again on the next video guys. Much love, much love. See ya. And good luck in your kids.